Dobar den, počtovani gledači. Ja sledite emisije to makinonsko izdanje, koja što se emitova seko aftora sabota, na Rogers Televizija, na kanalite 10, 6, 3, 84 i vo High Definition 540. Deneska je 8. mart 2014. godina, a ja sum poveda Piskačeva, urednik od i voditelj od nova vaša programa, koja što ve informira i zabavuva. Denešnova emisija posvetuvame na Blagoja Ristić, producentot i urednikot na Srpskata televizija, koji iznenadno počina na 9. februari godinava. Blagoja Ristić, inaku moj poranešen soprug, beše roden na 24. januari 1950. godina vo Skopije, Republika Makedonija, vo toa vreme Jugoslavia, od roditelji Dobrica i Čedomir Ristić, rodum od Vranje. Po završovanje to na Srpska gimnazija vo Skopije, Blagoja Ristić završuva Mašinski fakultet vo isti od grad. Do 1984. godina toj raboteše kako inženjer vo Skopskata železara, koja ja napušti za da gi prevzeme dolžnostite na marketing direktor na olimpijadata vo Sarajevo. Vednaš potoa toj beše direktor za marketing vo Makedonskata komora, a vo 1988. godina otvori svoje privatno marketing studio Prvo od takov vid vo Makedonija. Fotografijata beša njegova pasija i to imaše nekoliko evropski sertifikati kako majstor za profesionalna fotografija. Zajedno s omene na 24. april 1990. godina Blagoja Ristić imigriraše vo Kanada kada vednaš završi grafički dizajn na George Brown College i raboteše kako grafički dizajner i fotograf do 1999. godina koga postana producent na Srpskata televizija na Rogers televizija. Od 2013. godina to je uspeo da dobije termin na Omni TV, kada što Srpskata televizija se emituvaše jednaš nedeljno niz cela Kanada. Blagoja Ristić kako televizijski producent beše prisuten na mnogu nastani vo Srpskata zajednica i so svojata programa go zabeleža i ove koveči život na srpskata komuna vo Kanada. Za svojot nepožrtvovan trud Blagoja Ristić beša nagraduvan od kanadskite i ontarijskite opštestvenici kako i od srpskata komuna. Večno užaleni za zagubata na svojot tatko ostanuvat našite deca Viktor i Mija Ristić. Ja koristam ova prilika da im se zablagoderam na site členovi na Srpskata komuna koji donira da ni se pomogne vo ova tragična situacija, a vo organizacija na Gordana i Joco Laković, Rodika i Bata Marčetić i Ivana Đorđević i Mirko Stokanović. Vo proloženje, počtovani gledači, prosledete del od posljedno to ispraknjenje na Blagoja Ristić kada što poveke od 250 luge dojdoa da mu iskažat posljedna počit.
life in Yugoslavia to move here in hopes of a better future for me and eventually my sister Mia. This was a huge sacrifice, one for which I will forever be grateful for. I can only imagine the struggles of starting your life over in a foreign country at the age of 40. From my younger years, I remember it wasn't e easy. However, my father did it for us, his children. He never gave up or complained, often working well past 2 a.m. just to support us. Somehow he always managed to stay positive. With a smile on, he'd tell us, you never get anywhere without some hard work first, kids. Nothing in life is handed to you. You have to earn it. He taught me exactly that when he purchased my first bicycle for me. At the time, he was delivering newspapers door to door for some extra money. I'll never forget the week he picked up an extra route just so he can afford to buy me a bicycle. However, he taught me I had to earn it first. That week, I helped him put all the flyers together, and together we got them delivered. At the end of the week, after one of the routes, he wanted to show me exactly how hard work pays off. So he surprised me with a trip to Canadian Tire that I'll never forget, and together we picked out my first bicycle. At the time, I was eight. Looking back now, I think one word would best describe my father, and it would be selfless. Never selfish, he always looked out for others before himself. He never dreamed of getting rich and retiring early. He instead dreamed of making a difference in people's lives. Whether it was the lives of the Serbian community in Canada or the lives of our close friends and family, up until the very day of his death, my father was known and respected for dropping his own issues to help others with theirs. One of the last nights I spent with my father, I remember he received a call from my mother. She had a terrible migraine headache and couldn't go film an event she was scheduled to film. The second he was asked, my father dropped his plans for that night to go help my mother. With no complaints or regret, he knew his help was needed and he gladly obliged to make our lives as easy as he possibly could. There is no doubt in my mind that my father's sudden un untimely passing is a result to his soul being needed elsewhere in our universe. Someone in heaven needed his help, so he unfortunately had to leave us. He also taught me that respect can go a long way. He used to say, son, the hardest thing you can ever earn is another man's respect. You have to show it to earn it. However, once respect is mutual, it's a beautiful thing. Along with this mutual respect comes honesty, dignity, and a person's care. He would commonly remind me that no relationship in life is truly complete without mutual respect. This was the way he led his life day in and day out, constantly trying to earn the respect of others for his tough work and great accomplishments. Often he would joke, saying, we kids had no idea how respected of a man he was, and in the end he was right. We have been shocked by all the people who have reached out to our family in this time, extending their hands for support only out of respect for my father, Blago Aristic. On January 24th of this year, my dad turned 64 years old. Two weeks ago, I confided in a close friend that for the first time in my entire life, I was forced to consider the fact that one day my dad might not be here. The idea startled me more than I can ever explain. It brought unease and vulnerability into a world filled with an endless sense of security which I so cherish. 
I quickly reassured the both of us, boasting of his immaculate health and fitness. I told her how in the summer he biked every day, sometimes up to 15 kilometers at a time. I told her how he swam every day. I told her about how often he went skiing and how much he loved it, how much energy he had and all the deliciously fresh food he ate. I ended the conversation with a joke, saying I was being nothing but ridiculous and my dad would look most likely outlive even me. Five days later, everything I've ever known to be true changed. The foundation I stood on relied on crumbled to pieces. Today I stand before you, 20 years old, with a confession to make, that despite my heels and decent vocabulary, I'm still that four-year-old girl watching Lion King, because I still don't understand. I don't understand how, and I don't understand why, and quite frankly, I'm finding it very difficult to believe the fact that my daddy won't be the one taking pictures of me at my graduation. He won't help me paint my room, and he won't pick out the perfect shade of purple for me. I'm still waiting patiently for the hero of my story to return, just in time to walk me down the aisle. Yet, as I say this, I must acknowledge how wrong I am to deceive myself in such a way. Because as hard as it is to believe that my dad is gone, the idea that he's not here to comfort me when I need him most is what is truly impossible. Although he is still here in spirit, the fact that I would love nothing more than to feel one last hug, and yet I'm not able to, proves what I'm so firmly trying to deny. Because my dad has always been, has always been there for me, every step of the way, every second, every moment. And if there was any way for him to come through for me right now, I know he would find it. For the past 20 years, I've been blessed to have the best dad in the whole entire world. He did everything for me. When I looked at him and said, Daddy, he didn't ask what I needed, as most fathers would. He didn't joke around and say no because he knew I was asking for something. He didn't even ask how much money I wanted. What my dad said to me was, tell me, what is it that I'm about to do for you? After the first time I went snowboarding, at dinner I mentioned that I had fun, and maybe one day I would buy myself a snowboard. I had brand new boots, bindings, and a board within three days. One time I said I wanted to play guitar. Two days later I had a brand new guitar and my first lesson with a world-renowned teacher, his good friend, Bojida. But what was most amazing about my dad was the time he dedicated to me, because to him I know that was what was most precious. I love my dad very much and he knows that. I also know how much he loves me. Despite this tragic situation, there's very little to regret. I got to see my dad one last time. My dad was happy and very proud of both me and Victor as we were of him. He took advantage of every minute of every day and he died doing what he loved, skiing. I'll always be daddy's little girl. And no one will ever be able to replace the spot which my dad held in my life. But my dad will always be with me in every picture that I take, in every decision I ever make, and every meal I choose to bake. He will live on through me and Victor and in the hearts of everyone he touched. My dad will always be my hero. My biggest fan, my protector and savior, my chef and chauffeur all at once, my inspiration and motivation, my dad, my hero. I love you, dad, and I will miss you every day for the rest of my life. And I want to apologize for every tear I will cry and have cried for you, because I will always remember the day you told me my pain was your pain. You said every one of my tears was an arrow straight to your heart. So I'm going to try my best to make you proud. I'm going to live my life with all the lessons I've learned from you, and I'm going to look at the positives of every situation, if even this one. And I know you'll be there with me along the way, in the memories I will share with others, in my heart and in my blood, and I'll never forget that. Well, I heard was a secret chord that David played, and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care for me. And it was the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major leaf, the baffled king composing hallelujah, 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 hallelujah.
Ете, почитувани гледачи, тоа е се што подготвивме за оваа 328 емисија на македонско издание. Ah.